the pelvic floor, the muscle and the fascia of the pelvic floor, uh, and their involvement in urinary incontinence uh, in women. This is the main area of my research program. So as a clinician and as a, re a researcher, this is really the area that I, uh, I have a passion about. So I hope that I will be able to share this with you today. Um, so the objectives of my, pre of my presentation are to review the prevalence and the impact of incontinence and other uh, pelvic floor disorder, but we will mainly focus on incontinence today and to discuss the involvement of the muscle, the fascia uh, in incontinence and the pathophysiology and also to discuss and gain insight about what are the solutions, what can we do for this problem. So, uh, I will start by saying that the pelvic floor is a very complex area in which muscle, organ, nerves, connective tissues, fascia, they all interplay to maintain uh, the, your, your, to, um, to maintain urinary, anorectal, and vaginal function. So when there's some kind of dysfunctional alteration, problem occur like incontinence and erectile uh, dysfunction like incontinence, defecatory disorder, uh, sex, uh, sexual dysfunction and problem also lesion with childbirth. So it is a complex area because there's a duality in, in their function. This muscle should be very, this muscle and the structure, the connective tissue, they all should be very stiff to support the organ, to maintain continence, and at the same time, they have to be flexible, to move smoothly for, incontinence, for a sexual function, for childbirth. So, so it is a complex area because it, it, it's like once this amount of structure, they have to do everything. So be flexible, stiff, everything at the strong, everything at the same time. Um, so, Urinary incontinence, I don't know if you know that, but the prevalence is very high. So it's 20 to 30% in young women, 30 to 40 in middle age, and in older women, it's reached 60%. So even if it's highly prevalent, it's not normal. So we have to, we can do something about it. And uh, another thing that we should all know is, especially in women in postpartum that are very interested usually in starting to, to uh, resume a physical activity, is that uh, if they, uh, the, the natural recovery for incontinence is three months postpartum. If women still uh, experience incontinence after this three month period, it is likely that their incontinence will not recover naturally. They have to do something about it. Um, and sometimes women wait because they think that it will, uh, it will just pass and it will get better, but it's usually not the case. Um, the pelvic organ prolapse, so any descent of the uh, bladder, the uterus, the rectum, this is also highly prevalent. So it, it usually happens a little bit later in life, after 45 years old. So one woman out of three have prolapse uh, and we rarely hear about it, right? And the main reason for all, uh, so maybe you're surprised to to, to know the prevalence of these pelvic floor disorder uh, because we really hear about it. It's, there, it's associated with a lot of stigma and embarrassment. Um, so it's a taboo uh, condition that we prefer to hide. Um, it is related to a reduction of self-esteem and quality of life. It is also uh, related to emotional distress and depression. And women often reduce or even interrupt their physical activity because they don't want to put themselves in position of having leakage. And this has very bad consequences because it is predisposing themselves to uh, all the, the condition that we know, cancer, obesity, cardiovascular disease. So the, this, um, this reduction in physical activity at long-term consequences. Um, incontinence and prolapse is also, uh, are also related to sexual dysfunction, um, and this could yield to, uh, to uh, difficulties uh, with their partner. And in older women, incontinence also play a crucial re uh, role because it is related, significantly related to the increased risk of fall, hip fracture, and we all know that this is 
uh, often a turning point when people get hospitalized and their condition uh, are getting worse when they are experiencing that those really key events. And uh, it, it doubled the risk of admission in nursing home for the elderly. So the, the consequences uh, of incontinence and prolapse are very high. And um, I want to, to, to really rapidly during my presentation, just to talk to you about the anatomy, just so that you can really um, uh, consider all the interrelation between the muscle and the fascia and the nerve, how complex it is. So I will go rapidly because this is not an, atom an anatomical course, but this will set the ground uh, so that you can see which kind, which kind of exercise and the synergy with other muscles. So uh, it's important to understand. So